Now our Behind China's Wall series in which we go behind the fanfare and the glamour of the current Olympic Games. The Chinese government obviously hoping to use the games to distract the world from its crackdowns on freedoms and crimes against humanity and genocide. Today we're going to take a look at how the Chinese government in effect censors much of what comes out of the Hollywood film industry. They don't do this of course through direct control. They do it through their enormous economic leverage and the fear from studios on missing out on a market of 1.4 billion people in China. Here to discuss, Eric Schwartzel. He's a Hollywood reporter for the Wall Street Journal. He's author of a brand new book just released today. It's called Red Carpet, Hollywood, China, and the Global Battle for Cultural Supremacy. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Eric. So one of the films you write about, which really captures the impact the Chinese government is now able to, to have on American movies, is found in Top Gun, released in the 80s, and its upcoming sequel. When the original was released in 86, offending China, not a concern. But for the sequel, the studio has made a significant change to the look on the jacket of this iconic character, uh, Maverick. Uh, explain to folks what's going on here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, in 1986, not only was Hollywood not concerned about the Chinese market, but I mean, do we have an example of more raw, raw cinema than the original Top Gun. I mean, enlistment shot up after that movie came out. And then when this more recent version uh, was advertised uh, a couple years ago, people noticed, as you said, that the Taiwanese and the Japanese flag had been removed from Maverick's jacket. And there's a very clear reason why, and that is that in the time between the original Top Gun and this reboot, China's box office has grown to be the biggest in the world. And any movie produced by a Hollywood studio that's as expensive as Top Gun needs that market often to turn a profit. So that means that even down to something as small as a flag on a jacket might need to be removed in case it offends the Chinese censors who decide whether or not this movie will get into those Chinese theaters. Right. China obviously does not consider Taiwan to be an independent country. Anything that calls into, into question uh, the one China policy is a political third rail for the communist government. Um, you write about Brad Pitt starring in the 1997 film Seven Years in Tibet, another country that China has conquered. And being in that film landed Brad Pitt in very hot water with Chinese authorities. They essentially banned Brad Pitt and his film from China for years and years. Tell us more about that. Yeah, not only that, and this was back in 1997 when the Chinese box office was an economic afterthought for, for studios. But Sony, which released Seven Years in Tibet, quickly learned that it was not just the studio access that was threatened by the release of this film about a political exile and history that China would rather not see on the big screen. It was not the studio that was threatened, but actually Sony proper. And this explains a lot whenever you see how these conglomerates have taken over Hollywood, why a movie that might seem like a minor production produced by a subdivision of a subdivision actually becomes this kind of radioactive element that threatens the entire corporate structure. So if Disney makes a movie that offends the Chinese authorities, it's not just that movie that might be lost, but also theme park plans, consumer products plans. I mean, there's billions of dollars on the line for any of these relatively small infractions. One of the craziest examples in your book um, is the 2012 remake of the film Red Dawn, uh, starring another top star, Chris Hemsworth. China was supposed to be the antagonist in the movie, the country that conquers the United States. But after the film was shot, they made a little bit of a change. Tell us about that. I mean, it was a costly change. I mean, the, the movie had finished filming with the story being China invading the U.S. in this remake. Of course, in the original, it was the Soviets. This time they updated it for the, uh, the 2010s and made it China. And then when China made it clear that they were going to be very angry if this movie came out as it was shot, MGM spent a million dollars hiring a visual effects firm here in Burbank to go in and swap out the flags, swap out the dialogue, and make it a North Korean invasion. Now, critics and even the writers of the film itself pointed out it was a little less plausible than a Chinese <laughs> invasion. But, but nonetheless, this lesson was ab absorbed by all of Hollywood because ever since then, that movie came out in 2012, since then it's been more than a decade we have not had a major studio put a movie into production with China as the villain. Of course not. Profits above all else.